Hey, how's it going? And today I wanted to show you how to import a spreadsheet as a data table in Unreal Engine and then how to kind of access that data. And then I'm going to do a follow-up tutorial to this on what you can do with that data once you have it in. I'm actually going to jump into Excel. This was kind of quirky for me to figure out in the beginning, but the first column that you make is by default when you bring it as a data table, there's a row number. So what you do is the very first cell in A1, you leave that blank. And then you can number your cells however you want them. You know, one, two, three, four, five. And then the next column over, that's when you begin your data. So the, the top row will be the title of your columns. And then it knows when you import it, then what follows underneath that is your data. So here, just to keep it simple, I just have one column called name and one called characteristics. And I just have five. So this should create a, an array with five elements in it. But leave this A1 blank. And then what you do is you just go File, Save As, and I'm just going to call this Text File 3. And I'll just go ahead and save that to my PC. Okay, then what you can do is now what we're going to do is with this saved, we're just going to jump into Unreal Engine. And there's no point in bringing that file in because yet, because it's going to be looking for a structure. So what we're going to do is create that first. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click, go to Blueprint, and go to Structure. And you can just leave it called Define Structure. And we'll double click into it and I'll just dock this up here on top. We can define the data in here and it can hold the variables in here, but it's really not doing any more than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this what my second row is called, which is name. And this is going to be of a text type. And then I can add another row and then I'm going to call this and the names should match the names that you put in here should match what you're entering on your database. So they, they should match exactly the names, the column names. So I'll call this characteristics. And that's a text type too. And save this. And now I've got this structure in. So now all I got to do is go and get my file, my spreadsheet. So import to game. And then once I have that selected, I'll choose my new user defined struct, and I should just be able to go apply. And then there's no problems. It comes in perfect. And you'll see it right down here now. It's a data table. And you'll see we have our rows and everything set up real nicely for us. The whole advantage of this data table is that you can create the data in a spreadsheet, which is actually a lot easier than doing it in here. So then the question becomes, okay, we've got this data. Well, how do we get to it? How do we access it? And it's not really terribly difficult. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to divide this into two parts. And this first part of the tutorial is just how to get to the data. And then once we get to that point, I'll do it. My next tutorial will be how to express it and make it appear on the screen and stuff. But I just want to show you how to get to that data that we've just imported. So what we do is we're just going to create a blueprint here. And this is going to be a trigger that we're going to walk on. The player can walk on. So I'm just going to go box collision here. And there's that. And as always, I always like to thicken up those lines. So once we have our box created, we're just going to come down here to on component begin overlap. And it's going to put us into the event graph. And there's just a few things that we need to do to be able to access our data. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to search for something called get data table row names. And it's confusing because there's another one down here that we need. And it's the exact same name, except it doesn't have names on the end. But this is the first one we need. And we here we select our asset, which is our data table we just brought in. And we can go ahead and wire that up. And notice that this comes in as an array. So then we'll have all the same functionality that we would have with any array. I don't need this details panel, so I'm going to close that. So the next thing we're going to search for is the same thing. 
but it's called get data table row. It's very similar. And again here we can select the table that we want as well. But it's also here available as a an array, which is what we is what we're gonna really want. So because it's an array, we need to pull off of here and go get a copy of it. And then here would allow us to access each row individually by its index array value. So what we're going to do is we're just going to plug this in here and plug this in there. And then here on the out row, if I pull off of it and go break, you'll see that we have access to our data now. So from here, it would be pretty straightforward just to feed this data into wherever you wanted it to go. And that's what the topic of my next tutorial will be. So let's see if this will compile and save, and it does. So I'm going to go ahead and stop right here. And then if you're interested in knowing what you could do with this data, stay tuned for that very next tutorial, which I'll be doing in just a short time. So anyway, take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.